Hello, I'm Seth and behind the camera is Jonathan. We are from Nelson Tiny Houses here in beautiful Nelson, British Columbia. And today we are here to not show you a tiny house as usual, but uh, something a little different. We converted a school bus and before it drives away tomorrow uh, on its adventures, uh, we thought we would just do a quick little walkthrough and show you what we've been up to this spring. A woman named Louisa, who's a, a filmmaker, she came to us uh, early spring and had this idea to convert a school bus into a home slash working space where she can kind of drive it to really remote areas in British Columbia and all over the country and and uh, just have a kind of a comfortable setup while she does her her filming in these really remote areas kind of taking the luxuries of our uh, civilization with her out into the wilderness and so we were uh, excited about this project and we think it turned out well enough to share with you guys so without any further ado Let's have a peek inside the school bus. So here I am in the, I guess what will be the living room area. And beside me is the couch. And the couch converts into a, a bed, not a very wide bed. Um, but this whole front just slides out and I believe the idea is to have uh, a cushion here that is doubled and then when you pull this out you just fold it open and you double your sleeping space. It will kind of block off the, the way out of the bus but you could just jump over it if you needed to. And then there's full storage underneath here. We just put these little fronts um, with magnets on to hold those in place. I think eventually there will be a lot of filming equipment stored under there. Uh, the other kind of cool thing about this couch is there is a, a hidden table back here, uh, kind of sp spring loaded and it comes up and um, take the whole thing out and it just goes right here for an extra space to do work at. It's quite a big table, it takes up the whole the whole living room, but I think the idea was that you could have two people with a computer doing doing work uh, on it. And the other thing you probably notice right away is this beautiful artwork, uh, this kind of inlay. It's done by a local artist. She usually does um, smaller installations, but I think it was really uh, just a perfect fit for this bus. I'm glad Louisa found her and, and arranged all that because it really sets everything off. And then having having all the lighting, the LED strip lighting behind it, uh, also just kind of helps kind of make this pop out and then it also, of course, shows the curve of the beautiful wooden ceiling. Uh, the other huge feature that really changes the way um, this bus feels are the three skylights above me. It just adds so much light and a, uh, you know, a feeling of, of a never-ending ceiling there. Although I got to admit that the bus wasn't an ideal project for me because I can't quite stand up in it. Uh, luckily she can fit just fine as can most people. So yeah, I worked on my knees a lot on this project. Uh, before we go back any further, I'll just point out the little Hobbit stove that we installed. It's our usual stove that we kind of go to because it is the smallest stove that I know of that has a fresh air intake. And quite frankly, they're just really, really cute and practical. Um, I like that they're not super tiny, so you can actually get two or three hours of burn time out of them. 
and we installed a little fan above it just to kind of push some of the air to the other end of the bus. There is another heat source in the bathroom that we'll get to. Uh, I think the idea with, of course these windows are not ideal in any way for winters in Canada, but we left a few inches of space uh, behind this artwork and the idea is to have uh, some curtains that hide up there and then pull down. And my hope is that that, you know, just creating a, a pocket of air between the curtain and these single paned windows will really help with the R value. Uh, it's kind of all we could do. A couple of these are sealed units, which are, are, are much better, but most of them are just single pane. We did put insulation as much as we could in the ceiling and in the floors and in the walls below the windows, but that was kind of all we could do. Uh, but hopefully this little hobbit will, will keep her toasty in, uh, in those remote areas. So going further back, um, there's a couple of little counters that fold up. We went with all birch for countertops. Um, it's one of our favorite woods to use. It's very hard and it's local and it has a lot of character. So that is how that works. There is a fair bit of storage. She hasn't picked any knobs yet, so we're just using pieces of tape for now. But there's a lot of storage under here, and a few drawers here, a few drawers here. There's a couple of these guys for mason jars or what have you. Uh, there's definitely a lot of metal work in this bus. Duncan, our metal fabricator, spent just as much time in here as we did, I think. It's a fairly good size sink. I think it's like a 20 inch by 20 inch sink. And then in this corner, believe it or not, is a washer and dryer. Uh, I must admit, I'm a little bit skeptical. I think it came from Walmart. Um, we'll see. I was skeptical mostly just because it weighed so little. And it came from Walmart. But um, she picked it out and we put it in and hopefully uh, nothing will go wrong and we won't have to take it out of there again. There is some cupboard space up here. Um, this is for the lighting above the stove, propane stove. And then this, uh, this also, comes up and just does that. More birch. This is, I guess, for just extra prep space. And we tried to use as many magnets here and there just to hold things in place while she's riding down the road. Um, I think that is it for the, the kitchen area. Now you go back uh, this little hallway that has, you'll see the, the wheel well in it. Um, we tried to kind of make a, a feature out of it and I think it worked out pretty well. And right here is the bathroom. I'll try to get in there. I'll go snuggle next to the Dickinson heater. I thought it would be nice to have a little Dickinson propane heater in the bathroom, partly to uh, just keep all the plumbing that's in here from freezing, and also just because it's nice while you're having a bath to be able to have a bit of heat. Um, you can also take a shower with this thing. It's just like a, I guess it's like an animal trough. We got it at our farmer's supply store. Uh, I think it's like two feet by three feet by two feet high. And so she's small enough that I think she could actually have a little bath in there if she doesn't want to have a shower. The composting toilet is pretty standard. There's a little compartment for sawdust. And then, see what's in there. 
No one's used it yet. Um, we did put in one of these P dividers that is directly connected to the gray water barrel that is underneath the truck, the bus, whatever this thing is. And then this whole thing lifts up to uh, to empty out your your bucket to get your screwdriver out. And then there is a little there's a little exhaust fan in there that is just controlled with this switch and that will get rid of all the smell that's in this sealed compartment. However, you wouldn't want to park right next to a place where there's going to be a bunch of people standing next to your bus. That wouldn't be so pleasant for them because it does just directly vent outside the side of the bus. Ideally, we would have taken it kind of up higher, but that was a lot of work. So hopefully she'll just be out in the woods and it won't matter. Yeah, and then again, we went with the Dickinson. Um, these are designed for sailboats and I have installed at least a half a dozen of them in different tiny houses. And I like them because they are so sexy looking and because they're made in British Columbia. So if there's any problems, it's really easy to, uh, to get help with. Although actually I haven't had any problems. So um, I assume it would be easy. So yeah, she'll be nice and toasty in here while she's taking her bath in her animal trough. So next... Um, we will go into the bedroom. Before we go into the bedroom, which will be fun to watch, um, I'll just show you this little closet. It's only about a foot and a half wide on the inside, but at least there is a place for her to hang up some of her fancy dresses while she's out there in the bush working. Yeah, she's got a queen size bed back here and before i climb up onto it it does lift up um, there is extra storage underneath it and also two really big water tanks um, and then there's kind of a, a little mechanical room down here it's very tricky to get to it's been fun to work on this is where the on-demand water tank is. And then also, of course, the two big fresh water tanks are underneath her bed. So, and the water pump is also under there. And there is, turns out to be quite a bit of storage. You can even fit a couple people under here if you had to. Um, so, that goes down. Back here, we just gave her a bit more storage. Nothing too exciting. Um, a little bit more of the, the rope lighting. And then there is at least a desk over here where she can uh, watch movies. And there is a little, a little 120 outlet. And then I, we put a uh, cigarette, we put little cigarette outlets kind of everywhere so that she could at least plug in, uh, you get like a little USB converter that I think just takes it from 12 volt down to like five volts. And then she can charge all of her little devices and you can even get little lights that just she could clip on little led lights and they plug into little usb receptors so we thought she could use those we kind of put them we put them everywhere here over here too um yeah we went with uh, some like uh natural looking rope for for trim which really worked out well i don't know what else we really could have done um, that would be that simple. And Duncan made a few, there's a curtain rod actually at the front that I didn't show you, but there's another curtain rod here 
that just comes out and she can she can slide her her curtain rod in there um, it's very tricky to make uh, to make doors she wanted a, a bedroom door but of course that uh, we just scratched our heads for quite a long time and in the end she's gonna have to uh, live with a curtain that's the best we could do yeah I think that that kind of wraps up the inside of the bus I'll just quickly show you what she calls the garage. It's at the back of the bus behind this wall. There's actually about two feet of space where all of the solar stuff is gonna go. Before we go to the back of the bus, I just forgot to show you this kind of cool feature. She bought, um, how many did she buy? Oh boy, a whole bunch of these from uh, the local auto store and we installed them um, so she will have a whole lot of extra storage there's a bunch on the other side as well and I think this one has the propane tanks so she's got three 20 pound propane tanks and the regulator is all nicely protected inside of here uh, it's all very well vented this one the rest of them are not vented and then the back one on the other side is 50 feet of 30 amp cab tire connected to an RV plug so she'll just uh, open a little hatch and and pull out uh, as much of that cable as she needs to reach um, and then there's also an adapter on there so she could just plug into a normal outlet if she needed to but this really kind of helps make the school bus uh, a very cool bus. Here we are at the garage. Um, before we have a look in there, Duncan did build her a roof rack. We'll try to get some pictures of it. I think it's about a, a 10 by 10 deck that she could also used to strap stuff down if she needs more storage um, but you can also hang out up there and it's a way to get to the solar panels that are all mounted on the roof we don't have the inverter yet but the inverter will go in here eventually she's going to deal with that later um, right now we just have it so it's hooked up to 120 um, the batteries aren't hooked up or anything but this is where all of that will end up going and it's it's also useful because this wall that is is dividing the garage from the bedroom is really well insulated and so it was a way to just make the bus that much more insulated so this area will get fairly chilly but I think these batteries can handle getting pretty cold and if she has to she can put in a little heat tape um, in this area or something and plug it in yeah that is the garage and that's the school bus uh, it's our second bus that we've converted and uh, hopefully not our last because it was a fun fun project uh, until next time, keep watching Tiny House and School Bus Conversion videos. <laughs>